Hi guys, I'm Young Yu, a Google Summer of Code student for Vertex this year. In this video, I'll be giving you a quick overview of what I've been working on, an administration console for Vertex that aims to provide you with an overview of what's going on inside your app, as well as to hopefully impress your manager with pretty visuals. It's also relatively easy to set up and integrate, and I'll be covering that in my next video. So without further ado, here goes nothing. To start off, let's launch a test application I've written that demonstrates all the important features of the panel. Um, it's a Twitter wall application that displays tweets from a stream, and you can select the tweets to stream based on the hashtag. And in order to get some good metrics out of it, uh, let's start by subscribing to a stream. Uh, let's, uh, let's just resist. That should be a reasonably popular one. Wait and see. So this uses the event bus bridge, all that sort of stuff, um, to um, take the full advantage of the Vertex ecosystem. All right, now let's go to the admin panel. So this is currently behind HTTP basic authentication. This is not something you want to do in production because uh, this is probably not the most secure uh, thing ever. But um, with this panel, you can use any authentication setup you care for. Um, not, not limited to HTTP basic authentication. Uh, all right, um, so here is the overview page. As you can see, it displays a bunch of metrics of the common stuff you would typically um, want an overview of. For example, the Java heap usage, system load, HTTP response times, as you can see here, request per second, historically, event bus metrics, what resources are available, all that sort of stuff. Excuse the load average. Um, Java has some issues determining the load average on Windows, so it just spits out negative one. Um, as you can see, it looks pretty fancy, good overview of what's going on, and uh, you can also deploy verticals of this. I don't actually have anything to deploy right now, but I'll show you the UI. Um, let's you select all the basic stuff, like you can scroll the number of instances, you can select a standard, um, whether or not it's high availability, and the name, all that sort of stuff is validated. For example, um, if I type an invalid JSON for the deployment config, um, it will fail to um, let me deploy the button, click the deploy button, but if it's valid, then it lets me deploy. Uh, so that's it for the overview page. Um, with regards to services, this is a front end for Vertex service discovery. I personally don't have that many services registered, but um, I assure you the pagination, all that sort of stuff works. Um, so all this is entirely filterable and sortable. For example, I can filter by the type, type in proxy, you see that, or the name, or any of the details available in here. Um, in addition, I can also view the metadata available for the service. Um, this is pretty simple, just a um, event best broadcasting interface, and it's um, here, and all of it's formatted and searchable as well. Um, logging, um, my current implementation, due to difficulties with integrating for Log4j, only supports log back with SLF4j, but I'll probably have Log4j working by the time I finish this project. So um, it's a panel that uses um, the Vertex event bus to stream log messages by adding a custom appender to the root logger, and uh, also lets you set the log levels and it cascades down as you would expect. For example, if I want to set all loggers to all, I just simply set the root to all, and then all the loggers will display all the output. And if I want to, for example, set the netty output to only display warnings, I can just do that, and it will display only warnings. Um, and uh, same for um, my top level logger. Um, what, uh, what you can also do is if you want to hide some loggers from being seen, since we've got a lot of noise right now, but don't want to actually change their log levels on the server, um, you can, for example, uh, tick one of these checkboxes on the left, and if I tick those, then all that sort of stuff disappears, and you can see what you actually want to see. Um, and if I untick it, if I tick it back, then all of that comes back. And all the loggers are searchable because we've got quite a lot of it here. So, for example, I can search for my package name, all that sort of stuff. Um, with regards to circuit breakers, um, this is a front end for the Vertex circuit breakers. Um, implementation. Uh, if you don't know what circuit breakers are, they are something you would use for uh, remote calls or, or something of that nature where things may periodically fail and you don't want it to keep on retrying if you fail. Um, so these graphs show the rate at which the circuit breaker is called, not the rate at which calls are actually executed. Um, be, that is because um, if the circuit breaker is open, which is bad, then the calls aren't actually executed and the breaker is bypassed. Um, as you can see here, we have the names, whether or not it's open, it's all color coded, and you can sort by the state, by the name, by the rate, number of calls, all that sort of stuff. Um, and um, if you hover over any of the graphs, you can get the number of operations per second that's processing directly. And if you hover over the top part, then you can see a bunch of statistics like successes, failures, exceptions, the um, 
how many um, exec what's the execution time, the last 10 seconds, all that sort of stuff. It's all configurable on the server as well. And lastly, as with everything else, this is completely searchable. You can search by name, all that sort of stuff. Well, with regards to the shell, the shell is just another interface of interacting with the Vertex. Um, so it lets you do stuff. Um, you can check the docs for this, like list the number of metrics, subscribe to an event bus address, all that sort of stuff. Um, it's completely resizable. Um, for example, I can resize this window. And then it should display a smaller size column size when I um, bring it back. And in fact, everything in this panel has been um, somewhat responsive. It should scale up to most desktop devices. It's not really optimized for phones due to the nature of this project, but um, it should work properly for the vast majority of developer devices. With regards to health checks, um, this is a mechanism that Vertex uses to let you monitor specific components of your application under a tree structure. Um, so this is a real-time view of the health checks that are available to my application. As you can see, it's a tree. Um, they're flashing because I currently just have checks, you know, failing and succeeding at random intervals, that sort of stuff. And um, a bunch of the checks have data affiliated with them. For example, um, if it's timing out, then I can hover over this check and see that the cause of the failure is a timeout. And this one, I have a level for the number of ePoll available or whatever. And um, you can hover over all these to see the data if they have any data at all. Uh, it's not a very fancy overview, but um, it provides a good um, look at what's going on inside your checks. And lastly, but not least, the pool statistics. So um, in your application, you probably have a bunch of pools, like worker pools, thread pools, database pools, all that sort of stuff. And so this uses the vertex metrics in order to grab an overview of your pools in the, your application. And you can easily see at a glance, um, what's the state of your pools, how much of them are being used, what's available, all that sort of stuff. And as you can see, um, you can tell by the color um, uh, the pool load. So if it's over 60% goes to red, if it's over 33% goes to orange, and if it's under that, it goes to to yellow. Um, also, um, you can see how much is queued. Um, there's currently zero queues at the moment, which is good. Um, and then the rate at which tasks are run, the execution time for the tasks, um, how many are queued. Any key being queued is bad because that means your pool is suffering from some contention. And the wait time um, before things are actually um, executed after being submitted in the queue. So that's it for the overview of the panel. I hope you found it informative. Setup instructions are in the page for the project. Uh, thanks for your time and uh, have a great day.